so let's take a look at how you can install mysql community edition on windows so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mysql.com website and here you can see you have page that looks something like this if you are seeing this in near future you may notice some changes on this page so it won't be exactly the way it is looking right now so what you should do is go to either downloads page or you can scroll to the bottom and usually you will find products there so usually the products listed are paid so you have to find the community edition in all these links so here you can see mysql community server if you click on this it should take you to that download section now here you can see it says mysql community server 8.0.0 21 and depending on your operating system it may give you a version bit previous or the current one so you get the option to download that and here you can see the installer you have in zip archive or you can also choose this single installer for everything so you can choose which one applies your case in my case what I have done is I have downloaded the MSI installer and I'm going to double click on it and it should start uh, do note that you need to have your Visual Studio build tools installed in order for this installer to work so make sure that you have Windows 10 SDK installed as well as Visual Studio C++ build tools. So if you are using Windows 10 or higher, then you should be downloading Windows 10 2019 Visual C++ build tools. And once you have that, it will go through that installer and it will also check whether you have those installer necessary files and then it will proceed ahead otherwise the installer will stop in the middle and you will have to go through installation of those missing dependency files now you can see the installer has started wizard that looks something like this now here you have option to choose setup type so you have developer default server default client full and custom okay so if you go with the developer default you will get most of the things that you need for mysql specific app development so you can go with developer default or you can choose custom where you have to select each component that you wish to install so my suggestion go with developer default it will download what you need and you can make use of that for development purpose next thing you will find that uh, installation will check some of these items ready to install you can click on execute and let it install and it will show you status of what's installing what's installed and the percentage okay as you can see it has managed to download some of the connectors for languages like c++ .NET, python there is also odbc connector and it has downloaded documentation and samples as well Okay, now what it will do is it will ask you to click on this next button after you are done with this part so click on next now here you can see it has this ready to configure status that you have to go through click next now here you can choose what type of server you want you can choose from in ODB cluster or you can choose from standalone mysql server which is classic replication so let's see if i 
can make use of standalone for now okay now here you may notice that you have some defaults here like port 3306 and also x protocol port 33060 and also the type development computer okay so we will go with that and click on next now here it asks you to make use of password encryption for authentication so you may have to add password so click next so here you may be asked to add root password so let me try this okay right password is weak but i'm going with that okay now apart from root password it will also ask me to add user so we can add one user let me add my name then also add password okay click on okay now i have one user and one root i can click on next okay so it can start with system startup or i manually have to con configure when to start or not so i'm going with windows service that starts with windows so click on next now here you can see it will ask you to apply the configuration that you just did click execute and it will go through each one of that one by one now once the configuration is applied you can click on finish and you will find that your server router are ready to use you can click on next and here you can see you can choose to update your host name okay or your port along with your username and password and test the connection so let's say if we use host name as 127.0.0.1 port 3310 then your password for root you can test the connection okay if you get message such as that because host is not reachable and you have to first start the service okay if you don't get to test your connection then that means you don't have active service running okay now what we can do is we can just finish this and we can check whether we can connect to server again okay connection is successful that means it does work okay so click on next execute so that it applies that configuration and once finished will come out of this part as well now click on finish now click next can copy the log if you want it for your company or so and now click on finish this should start one mysql shell okay that will do some check and it will auto exit okay another thing you can go to your windows menu and then you can check what's added you can see mysql shell then command line is also added and now you can scroll all the way to mysql section here you can see 
all the content that you need for MySQL is added. Okay, you can see workbench, shell, then installer to make changes again, then two command line instances, one is being Unicode. Okay, here you can see MySQL shell that looks something like this. There is also workbench that will automatically start okay, without we having to do anything because this is the first run of that. So it will start in the background. Okay, now here you can. Okay, now whenever I wish to make use of that instance, I just have to click on it and begin working. Okay, so if you can see these two things running on your system that means you have installed mysql successfully on windows